impulsiveness and being impulsive. And God gave me this message a few weeks ago, and uh, I had to call in and say I have a message. <laughs> um, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for everyone here at Amazing Love Ministries. Thank you for creating us and allowing us to make choices in our lives, way different from any other of the creatures that you've made that basically just go by instinct. They can't make choices like we can. So help us make the best choices. Help us to absorb your word and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, <laughs> I have to write this down uh, when God gives it to me. Uh, that way it's you know more accurate. I can't shoot from the hip like other people can. <laughs> um, impulsiveness is, I see it, I like it, I want it now. Everybody knows that, right? We all struggle with that. Children are notoriously impulsive. And a child will say, I want candy for dinner and I want it now even when it's not quite dinner time. Now we know that just candy for dinner is not good, right? What happens if you just eat candy all day long? You get sick, thank you. There's no balance. Children are immature and they don't know any better and they have to be taught. And we are God's children. Impulsiveness is a, is a trait of spiritual immaturity that we all struggle with. Uh, especially me, including me. <laughs> we want what looks sweet, and tastes sweet, and what appears to be sweet to us right now. Thank you, Chris. Hello. Okay, so we want things right now, don't we? Microwave generation, we want it now. But how many of you know that that's not how we should conduct ourselves? Instead, we should study it and make sure it's approved by God before letting it into our lives. Walking in Christian maturity means walking out of impulsiveness. Impulsiveness needs to be reined in like a thoroughbred horse. Just imagine a racing horse, thoroughbred racing horse going down the track. And it's going full speed. And uh, it's got all that power. And uh, our emotions do that too. Our emotions are powerful. Um, but the only thing reining that in is, is a little jockey with the reins. And God gives us the reins, and that's self-control. And um, that's what we need to do. We need to rein stuff in a lot. I do it all the time, especially when I feel myself getting angry or frustrated at work or something. I just go, rein it in, Don, rein it in. <laughs> that usually works. Um, and God gets a hold of me and then just, just takes it from there. God doesn't give us, his children, what looks, tastes, and appears sweet all the time because he knows that real food is much more nourishing and balanced. So what I'm trying to get across to you is this. Look into the content of what is appearing to be sweet to you. Is it balanced with godliness? We all go running off looking for happiness, our sweetness, our candy, but it doesn't balance with godliness. Or but if it doesn't balance with godliness, it could make us sick in many ways. Spiritually, financially, physically, all kinds of ways. So look into what is appearing sweet. Read into the thing or person or activity or whatever it is that you're about to immerse yourself into. Make sure it's approved by God. Hold high standards, godly standards. Godly standards should be your measuring standard. Things and people may seem sweet on the outside, but could be ungodly once the layers are peeled back. Just because something looks sweet doesn't mean you have to impulsively dive into it. Instead, hover around it, study it, invest some time into studying it, because after all, you are what you eat, right? <laughs> uh, well, let me replace that cliche with, with this. You are what you take into your life. You are what you take into your life. God sees what you're taking into your life. In 1 Chronicles 28.9 says, The Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. He's way ahead of you. You have to ask yourself, would God approve of this? If not, what should you do? You say, no thank you, and you continue to seek out godliness to invest into your life. The things that God would approve of. Do an inventory of your life. And what is in your life that isn't godly? Trim that vine. No, pull that vine out from the roots. 
the things that are deeply rooted and have been for years. You might even have to trim some branches if you let it get out of hand. So the next time something catches your eye, and I say eye because that's what grabs our attention first, and that's probably why God said, if your eye causes you to sin, to gouge it out, right? <laughs> so the next time something catches your eye that appears sweet, people, things, activities, drugs, friends, stuff on our screens, our TV, our computer, our phones, music, food, entertainment. Did I miss anything? Mm. Anything, anything that crosses your mind. Our wills, our jobs, marriage prospects, just especially the ones that will affect you long term. The more we submit ourselves to the ways of God, the easier it will become to be discerning. Discern means to recognize mentally. Discern, discernment becomes strengthened the more we immerse ourselves in God's word, in his ways, his environment, and keeping in prayer, in constant communication with God. And like Chris said in his message, find ways to feed your faith. Go to Bible studies, do devotions, hang out with godly people. And here, try this, practicing this. Keep yourself sheltered from the ways of the world. Ooh. <laughs> it's hard. You can do it, little by little. Don't you wish you could just pull out one weed in your yard and all the weeds come up at one time? Oh, yeah. It'd be awesome. <laughs> you can't do it. You have to weed it little by little. Exercise your spiritual mental awareness. Be constantly discerning. And ask yourself, is this secular, which is the worldly ways, or godly? This includes your reactions to things, too. This gets me all the time. Ask yourself, am I reacting in a godly way or the way the world expects me to react? Like, if something happens that would normally make someone mad, are you going to follow that pattern? That's where you have to be careful, because you'll be following the pattern of the world. You have to think, what would Jesus do, literally, like the bracelet says. It's really tough, and it's hard, especially when emotions get in the way. But we will get quicker at discerning the more we practice it. And the, what I've been doing is uh, just getting emotions completely out of the way. And that way, it clears your head, you can think more. Okay, well, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go from here? And I can make better decisions. Um, like I said, we'll get quicker at discerning the more we practice it. You just have to remember to practice it as quick as you can, as quick as you can recognize it. Um, I've been in situations where I've had victory and then I'm still working on others. Like instant stressful moments, things that just cause instant stress. Instead of getting stressed and impulsively cussing quickly, now I hesitate. <laughs> but I try and then I apologize. I'm sorry God, I'm sorry God, I'm sorry God. And smack myself in the mouth and whatever. Still working on it. Um, but I, I know I'm not the only one up here, am I? Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we'll get to where we think of how we're going to react first instead of reacting first. And that's when you know you're maturing and you're growing in godliness. So be constantly discerning. Ask yourself, is this secular or godly? Cut out the secular and embrace godliness. Keep yourself in this mentality. If you feel yourself drifting, listen to the Holy Spirit. He's right there with you. Just listen. You've heard the saying, wherever you go, there you are. Well, wherever you go, there he is too. Mm. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God's gift to you. He's your godly companion. Let's have a daily, by the second relationship with God. Let's, just not, let's not just have a go-to God. Like some people go to God when things are desperate and they need help, but they don't have a relationship with him, and they expect their prayers to be answered or a go-to relative, you know, that you, you don't see, you don't keep in contact with, but you go to them because you know they have the means to help you. Or when we get sick, we have a go-to doctor, but we don't otherwise have a relationship with them. Mm. Or a go-to shop or mechanic when our vehicle breaks down. You get my drift, right? Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> Let's not do that with God, our maker, our creator. That, the, the God that's involved with it and knows every aspect of our lives, Keep in contact with him. He always knows what's going on before you pray about it. He is orchestrating this entire world and every person in it. 
and he knows every person's thoughts, desires, and the problems. He takes notice of your prayers. Sometimes it might feel like he's not noticing or he doesn't hear you or you're not seeing any results right away, but he's, he's got it all under control. Be patient. Being patient is so hard because when do we want stuff? Now. Yes. Stop it. We're being impulsive. <laughs> Cut it out. Um, I'm pretty patient uh, most of the time, but sometimes I want things rushed a little bit. So a while back I prayed, God, I know you come through all the time, but it's usually at the last minute. Could you please give me a heads up early so I don't stress so much? <laughs> Waiting is so stressful. And when you don't see any evidence of things coming to fruition. So he gave me this analogy. And uh, it might be different for you, but when I was young, I used to like to do jigsaw puzzles. I haven't done any in a long time, but I probably still like them. So when I put one together, I put the framework, whoops, put the framework together first, and I'll get some colors together, I'll get some pieces put together like a clump, and then uh, I'll be looking at the box, and uh, I'll put the clump like where I think it goes, and I'll have like little clumps outside the framework, little pieces outside the framework, but you can't connect those pieces until the right pieces are connected. And you ever try to jam one where it's not supposed to go? Mm -hmm. We do that all the time. It's crazy. And I just... I call it banging my head against the wall trying to get my way and uh, God's like looking down at me are you done yet can I take this now <laughs> hmm. and uh, I just have to give it to him but what he revealed to me is we are all puzzle pieces of his and we are all very valuable the godly the ungodly he, uh, he uses everybody he's created everyone so he uses everyone All right, yep, we are all God's puzzle pieces, believers and non-believers. We're all going to be used for, by God for his purposes. We all belong in this framework, and we're all being worked on until it's time to be exactly where God knows we're supposed to be at exactly the right time we need to be there. You, you can't force yourself into a spot that you don't belong in the wrong timing. Get it? Yeah. That was pretty cool to me when, I, when he revealed that to me. I was just like... <laughs> He'll give you opportunities to grow in maturity. So let's try to be less impulsive and more discerning. And this way we will be more effective in living and glorifying a Christ or living yeah, in living a glorifying Christian life. Be discerning. Don't be impulsive. Be a studier. Be smart. Be godly. Strive for spiritual maturity. Don't rush into things. Embrace godliness. That's it. Let's pray. Father God, help us to stay in your environment. Help us to transform our lives better, to serve you, and in so doing, receive a blessed life. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, who is right here with us as our constant companion. Help us to be discerning and recognize true sweetness. Help us not to be impulsive, but to study what appears sweet and pleasing on the outside or to our eyes. Help us to avoid getting sick by immersing ourselves in something that you would not approve of. Help us to always glorify you with every breath we take. In Jesus' always loving name, amen. amen. amen.